Hi there, good morning. As you can see from behind me, the mist is on the lock, so I'm gonna leave it a little while for that to clear off. It's only about half past six in the morning. I'm up early, dead keen to go out, really. So, uh, you can see real time behind me. Uh, another little boat here, Kingfisher. That's a uh, Aaron 16, nice little boat. So, um, whilst we're waiting for this mist to uh, clear off, um, I thought I'd just show you around the boatyard and uh, and tell you a bit about Lockhaw Boats and uh, show you the facilities. It's really quite good. Uh, it's one of my favourites. Um, I said it's probably my favourite because um, it was the very first time I launched uh, real time. Um, this is where I came to start off with. So uh, yeah, fond memories. This is where it all began. This is how it all started. Okay, so I'm going to uh, take you over to the uh, main office, show you what goes on there, and uh, uh, show you a couple of the slipways and pontoons and things. And uh, I think maybe we'll have a quick walk around the boat, so I'll show you a few boats that I quite like. Yeah, that's the thing to do. Okay. So this is the main little harbour. Those are berth holders there. And uh, over to this side is the, the pontoons, really, kind of for visitors and things. So this is the main office at Lockhaw Boats. Um, I believe you, you used to be able to hire boats here. I'm not sure if you can anymore. I, I'm, I'm not sure if that's not a little bit out of date, but you'd need to check that by calling the number that you can see on the screen there. Uh, definitely get your fishing permits here. So you can get a permit for a day, um, a week, a year. I think you can get a three day permit as well. Uh, and there's a few bits of tackle in there. There's not a massive amount of tackle, but it's more about, you know, sort of the boat facilities. But uh, it's certainly getting out of the jam, there's hooks and uh, and some Rapala laws, that type of thing in there. Just under the shelter here. You can see I've got my camping stove on the table. I've just been making a brew, uh, making my coffee ready for uh, going out on the boat. This is the uh, main office in here. This next door along here, uh, there's a drying room and there's also uh, a freezer in there. So if you've got dead bait that's frozen, you can keep that frozen in there. And uh, we won't film in there, but that's the loose as well. So it's quite a nice um, communal area. Plenty of tables and chairs under the cover here for, um, for sitting around and having a chat and a blether in the morning. Um, when I first arrived on Sunday morning, um, the uh, the owners here were doing, uh, they were cooking up some bacon baps for uh, the boaters and the uh, the fishermen. So they were having bacon sarnies here. Lockhaw Boats is actually run by a really nice couple, uh, Janet and Cliff. Uh, they're super helpful, super friendly. Um, if you've got any questions, they'll certainly put you right. So um, do give that number a ring if you uh, if you need to talk to them. And uh, there's an email as well on their website, I think. So uh, well worth checking out. It's one of the few places on Lockor that you can actually uh, come down as a kind of visitor and launch your boat. There are other little places, but they tend to be attached to holiday accommodation and things like that. But this is by far the best facility. Right, I'm going to take you over and show you the slipway and talk you through that. Okay, so um, yeah, no launching without permission. You need to go to the office and you need to go through all the terms and conditions and have a look at the disclaimers and sign up the form. So you need to do all of that before you actually launch and obviously pay your fee. It's really economic at the moment, 2023, it's £15 for a launch and recovery you do it yourself. So here's the slipway. Uh, it's a nice wide concrete slipway. 
and um, it's a, a good angle uh, it's good for your two-wheel drive car there's a, a sort of metal sheet just here in front of us um, it just sort of goes down there is a little step at the end of it when the water's at this height you don't honestly need to to back over that step and it's not big my little 8 inch trailer wheels cope with it once you've launched your boat you can just pull it round to one of the pontoons here just tie it up against the pontoon whilst you get yourself loaded up so um, that's that's the slipway um, difficult lighting conditions for um, filming here today because uh, as I say it is quite early in the morning the sun's only just coming up but uh, I thought I'd do this quick little video prior to going out on the boat there's plenty of room for parking up you know it's a good area this you uh, that's my black car over there and um, you've got a good area here for turning round with your trailer and everything um, obviously the uh, the berth holders keep their trailers in their own berth area and um, this is me just underneath the tree uh, Cliff, Cliff said I'll oh, put your trailer under the tree so we just park it there out the way as long as you're out the way I think everything's fine you can really put it where you want I suppose but uh, take some guidance on that anyway there is a, a field up at the back where berth holders can camp and I've seen some uh, camper vans and motorhomes there um, this is my estate car and I, I just sleep in the back of that to be honest uh, for a night when I'm staying here um, I'm not usually here too long and uh, as long as I can make myself some breakfast in the morning have a few flakes then uh, that's all that's necessary so for for all the up-to-date prices rather than um, rather than me just telling you the prices now apart from 15 pound for launch and recovery um, you're probably best just getting in contact and uh, and talking to them about what you want to do how long you want to stay um, how many people there are what your boat is and all that sort of stuff and Janet and Cliff will sort you out it'll be absolutely fine so we're better to start the uh, the tour of the boatyard than uh, another little Orkney coastliner this one's in rather a nice blue uh, looks a, a similar age to mine a uh, similar trailer and uh, let's just have a quick look uh, it's all wrapped up I'm not, I'm not sure what engine they've got on there but that looks quite interesting yeah nice little boat and uh, next to it is um, another Aaron they're really popular these Aaron's and um, that one doesn't look as if it's been out for a, a, a while they're 16 foot and uh, they're ever so sturdy they're a displacement hull so they just do a sort of eight or nine knots um, but uh, very very capable boat you see a lot of them up on the locks here this next boat here has got what they call a cathedral hull it's like a triple sort of hull these two bits either side uh, this one I think is the uh, CJR and that's also 14 foot just like the Orkney so uh, nice nice little boat that um, it's called a Sea Swift that one but I'm pretty sure it's it's the same as the CJR maybe the same mold something like that but uh, 4.35 so it's just over the, the the sort of 14 foot exactly the same as the coastliner uh, probably way about similar as well going up a little bit in uh, in size is the CG now I think that is around about 16 foot um, quite a nice big cuddy at the front there you can't walk around the decks here but you can get access to your anchor and your uh, your uh, tying up here your anchoring through this big front hatch um, it is a stepper it's a, it's going to be a much heavier boat than the Orkney and the CJR but a nice boat all the same nice boat now you'll see quite a lot of these around this is um, an Orkney 
Um, this one's a, a, an Orkney Longliner 2, I think. Yeah, an Orkney 2, Longliner 2. So, um, again, 16 foot. A little bit bigger than my boat. Okay. So, um, yeah, really nice 16 footer. Uh, on a relatively new trailer, that one. I would imagine that's a good bit newer than my boat. Um, I like the way the Orkney now are doing the windows where they're actually sort of bolted through here. So um, they just sort of have a seal and bolted through. I think that's better than the rubber seals that I've got. I think if I have to change my windows in the future, I'd do something like that. Um, nice A-frame across the top as well. I, I'd like something like that, but I, I'd be restricted height-wise to get that into my garage, so I think that's a no-no for me. Next door to it is a, a Warrior, uh, 165 that one, so that's over 16 foot. Again, much bigger, much heavier boat, so um, yeah, that um, probably requires a brake trailer. In fact, it is, it's on a brake trailer, so quite a, a bigger boat, a bigger boat. Little speed boat there. Sea Hunter, she's another Orkney, a uh, long liner, a 16 footer, similar sort of thing. And a big four wheel trailer, that. I don't think that's the actual trailer for it, but uh, again, over on this side, you know, we've got um, yet another Orkney. This one's the 520, so uh, that's a, a good sized little boat, that one. Again, bigger boat. Bigger, bigger to handle but uh, really nice don't know what engine they've got in the back of that one we'll have a look in a minute another one of the CJRs um, got a nice big cabin you could um, you could get a couple of berths in the front of that and uh, good weatherproof canopy on it the Predator 165 I think Predators and Warriors and those sorts of things are all a very very similar hull and some of them might even be the same kind of hull I think so um, yeah that's that's the Predator again looks a nice boat looks a bit heavier heavier than the, uh, the the little Orkney you know my boats at the bottom end of things really um, you do see quite a few of these cathedral hulls they're supposed to be quite stable yeah my boats at the bottom end of things really it's, it's, it's small but um, it's, it's, it's a good little boat. This one is called a Westport Pilot 4. Um, I think that is about 15, 16 foot. Uh, quite a nice open cockpit cuddy area on it, big windows, but also a really, really good canopy um, with these see-through windows. That um, would be good for winter weather here on the locks. It's quite a beamy boat. Um, it's a, certainly a very stable boat. I've never been out on one, but uh, pretty good. And as you can see here, it's got clips on it. So you can take this whole cuddy thing off and have an open boat if you wanted. So that, that's quite good. On my Orkney, you'd have to undo lots of screws and things like that. Now, Joanne here. It's another uh, cathedral hold boat. This one is, it could be a Wilson Flyer. I'm saying could be because lots of companies did actually use the same moulds as the Wilson. If it is a Wilson Flyer, you'll probably recognise it from Totally Awesome Fishing. He had a yellow one called the uh, High Sea Drifter, made it famous. Yeah, he did lots of exploits on that, out to sea, very capable boat. That's about 17 foot, I think. It's got the big fly bridge up here, the shelter. So much bigger boat, you probably want a 60 or a 70 on the back of that to uh, to push it along nicely. But um, yeah, you're just getting bigger and bigger each time really. Now this one interesting over here, I think this is a Mayland. I could be wrong, I could be wrong, but I think Millie S is a Mayland and that's one of the smaller Mayland boats and they were they were put together well, they're very strong boats, so uh, that, that's quite good. So just running across the line, another Orkney, uh, another Warrior, Shetland over here. You can't see much of that one because it's under the cover. 
um, again wandering up here um, I'm not sure what make Ellen is but uh, you know that looks a, a fun little boat to have on on the locks looks quite capable again um, I think uh, dances with pike I think that one is probably also a Mayland in fact yeah it is I can see the the sign, the manufacturer's sign on the side there and uh, way over in the back um, I think that one's also a Mayland as well and you can see another Predator here Predator 165 Sea Angler so you kind of get the picture as to what is the uh, the kind of go-to boats really they're all similar sort of things, similar names I think that one's also a Mayland um, quite nice with the, with the fixed um, sort of windshield I suppose up there looks a, a very sort of deep boat in the uh, in the gunnels here plenty of freeboard I don't think you'd fall off the side of that but that one will be a displacement hull probably um, six seven eight knots flat out maybe with a 19 horse a nine horsepower rather nice trailer there uh, lock hunter 2 um, again that's a, a long liner uh, Orkney long liner 16 uh, that's got an 8 horsepower Yamaha on the back because again that's a displacement hull uh, but nice big bows um, boat like that uh, chug along all day won't, won't use a lot of fuel with something like that so all nicely done catch and release Ferrex boat I'm sure um, bigger boat here I'm not sure it could be a Mayland um, I'm pretty sure I've spoken to the gentleman that owns that really nice guy uh, he keeps it up here during the uh, the summer season and then uh, takes it back home at the end of the year and uh, over there another Orkney yeah and so it goes on so you get the feel for the the type of boats that are out here there's um, another setup over here, plenty of camper vans. I hadn't realised they were there, I need to keep my voice down. So the other thing worth mentioning is that the, the yard's got a four wheel drive tractor here for launch and recovery. So uh, if you don't fancy launching your boat yourself, um, get Cliff to, to do it for you obviously there'd be a charge but um, and that's the other thing if you wanted to um, if you wanted to just leave your boat here um, you know I think you can ring up and uh, and they'll launch the boat ready for you for when you get here so uh, and, and take it back out again when you're finished so you could do that but obviously there's going to be a cost to that and you need to ring up and, and kind of check what all that's about. I think you've seen a little bit of the yard and what it's all about. It's very very different to the likes of Myla Marina that's uh, posh and got lots of big sailor yachts, very expensive boats and things. You know this is much more up my street and um, just some of these small little craft. Again looking over here I can see uh, Aaron 16, another Aaron 16 next boat along I'm not sure about that I think it's a Shetland uh, the next boat after that I think is a Wilson again Miss Lovely don't know Miss Lovely I think she might be a, a warrior of some description probably got that lot wrong but somebody if, they, if the owners watching they can put uh, a comment in the comments for us so is that mist going to burn off? It's quite blue up there. I reckon give it another hour or so and we'll be off, we'll be out. Look down the lock, yeah, you can see it. Just that mist on the water. How atmospheric is that? Just walk out to the pontoon there and let me have a look. So, the heron just flying off there, but yeah, early morning mist on the lock just need that to uh, burn off a bit more and uh, I'll go and get real time out and we'll go and get going yeah how about that 
So with it having the CCTV on it, it is very secure. Um, there's a um, there's a, a locked gate, and if you're a birth holder, you get a key fob for it, uh, so you can open the gate uh, and get entry. Otherwise, you have to press the buttons and uh, explain who you are. So uh, yeah, the owners are watching, seeing what's going on all the time. So um, it feels quite safe to leave your boat. Um, I've left all the stuff on real time last night. Yeah, the fish finders on it. The little outboards on the back, everything. So, I hope you've enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that little walk around the yard. And uh, just in the time that I've been filming, you know, uh, all of the uh, all of the mist has started to to lift. So, uh, yeah. Honestly, give it another half hour, and uh, I'll be ready to go out and we we'll do some fishing. Boat here. Good old doggy. Is um, is a, a pro angler, and um, she hasn't got a name written on the side, but she's called all the gear and no idea. But I honestly don't believe the guy. I reckon he knows what he's up to. Let's just have a quick look how the professionals set up their boats. Hi, uh, how you doing? So we got a lovely Suzuki 80 on the back. We got the various rod holders here. Um, I do like this mount across the back here with uh, with the rod holders and stuff on But uh, plenty of room in here so much bigger than uh, at the little Orkney but uh, obviously a big step up and everything and uh, Terrific got all the stuff in here the uh, the Garmin fish finder come uh, navigator um, Beautifully set up is this boat Yeah, that's how the professionals do it so this one's up here for about three weeks and uh, I'm pretty sure it's going to be getting some good ferox. So yeah, thank you very much for letting me have a quick look at your boat mate. And uh, yeah, it'll feature on YouTube, you're famous. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the tour around Lock Boats. Uh, thanks for joining me, see you in the next video.